Michelle Sam from Sally Wong's Kitchen. For my family, that was a show-stopping dessert. So now I'm going to show you how to make those chocolate spheres, how to put in the ice cream, and most importantly, how to ignite those chocolate balls safely. So let's get started. For the chocolate sauce, we are going to need some chocolate chips. So you can either use semi-sweet or dark chocolate, or you can use both. Because we're going to be doing it in layers, you could actually have a layer of semi-sweet and then a layer of dark. So it's really up to you. Now for the chocolate sauce. All I need are chocolate chips and coconut oil. Now I like making my chocolate sauce in a mason jar because if I have any leftover, all I'll do is put a lid on and put it in the refrigerator for future use. Now this chocolate chip and coconut oil mixture, this needs to be microwaved until the chips and oil have melted. Okay, so here is the viscosity of the chocolate. So it's pretty liquid. And these bowls are made out of silicone and I just bought them from Amazon. And the size that I'm using here is about three inches. It also comes with a silicone brush um, and you can use that or you could actually use a spoon. So I'm going to show you how to use both. What I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of chocolate at the bottom of each mold. And for this particular demo, I'm just going to make uh, four domes to make two balls. And first I'm going to use the actual brush that came with it and you would get your entire dome covered with chocolate and you'll need to reapply more if you did not put enough. And the key to making these domes is obviously the chocolate is really going to cool down at the bottom but you really want to make the sides of the dome thicker so make sure you apply the chocolate generously to the sides. And then if you don't have the silicone brush, you can use the back of the spoon and push it around. You can see parts that don't have the chocolate and you can either use a brush. Brush is really effective to get those parts. And then we'll put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes in order for the chocolate to harden. After that, we'll reapply another coat to ensure that the chocolate is thick enough. Okay, so I took it out and you can hear that it, it's actually hardened if I just tap it onto the counter. And then I'm gonna just put the last layer of chocolate sauce in just to make sure that the sides are well coated as well as strong to, to actually make a sphere. Now the inside of the sphere does not have to be smooth because no one is going to be seeing it. But we do want to ensure that the thickness of the walls are uniform to prevent the sphere from breaking. Now I have taken the silicone molds out of the freezer and so I'm going to show you how to release them from the molds. So the wall or the side should be pretty thick um, and be able to not crack unless it's very thin and because the silicone is pliable you can pretty much pull the silicone from the chocolate and separate it. So once you pull it and it separates, you can turn it inside out and then 
push it onto your tray. So I'm going to do that for all of them. And then what I'm going to do is turn it over to the side. And because it's silicone, it, it's very pliable. So you can just pull it apart like that. And these domes can be made in advance of your dessert. So you could even make these a few days ahead of time um, and then leave it in the freezer. Now I'm going to show you how to prep the ice cream. This can be done ahead of time or when you make the actual spheres. Okay, if you're making this in advance and here are your, your types of ice cream. So you can just buy store-bought ice cream like this or you can make your own homemade ice cream. So this is actually a vegan uh, coconut cream ice cream. So all you'll need to do is just make a ball and freeze it like that. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to assemble the balls, but also be able to give you some ideas of other ways you can um, use these chocolate shells. So first tip is when you're handling the chocolate molds or the chocolate spheres, make sure you have some disposable gloves on because if you don't have it um, on, they do tend to leave fingerprints. And last thing we want is fingerprints all over the sphere. So here's the thick walled half a sphere. This particular plate is warm in order just to melt the edges of the uh, half a sphere. So I'm gonna do that. And let's melt it. Don't want to melt it too much. And then I'm going to add the ice cream here. And I'm gonna place the ice cream right over there. Now, if you want to, dress it up with some fruit, and that could be a nice little fruit cup with a chocolate dome. However, in order to make the ball, I'm gonna take the other half of the sphere, melt it on the hot plate, and then place it onto the top like that. So, here's the other one, melt it. Take your ice cream, place your ice cream into your bowl. Take the other half of the sphere and place it on there. And then once this is done, freeze the balls until the chocolate and ice cream are frozen. Now for igniting those chocolate balls on fire. Few tips. We're going to be igniting the balls of chocolate with alcohol. So it is definitely not a kid-friendly dessert. The alcohol should be 40% alcohol to volume ratio. That equates to 80 proof. Anything higher, you risk the alcohol being too flammable and dangerous. And anything lower, you run the risk of the alcohol not igniting. So 40% seems to be the right amount. Now, besides having your 40% alcohol, it is also good to think about the taste that you'd want to have um, after the alcohol has somewhat burned off. Not all the alcohol burns off. So think about what flavor you would have as the after notes once the alcohol has uh, somewhat burned off. A few additional tips about alcohol. Because you're going to be burning the alcohol and then pouring it over your dessert, what you want to use is a metal dispenser. So a metal gravy boat works well, 
or a metal um, measuring cup works well that has the, that long handle. Uh, do not use glass because it might crack and definitely don't use plastic because it will melt. Another thing that I learned is that you need to have your alcohol emit vapors and this allows it to burn easier. So we're going to take the alcohol and we're going to put it into a container that is microwavable and then we're going to microwave it for about 30 to 45 seconds. Not boil it because then we'll be boiling off the alcohol and that will make it easier for the um, alcohol to ignite. All right, so that is about the alcohol and trying to be safe with the metal container. A few other safety tips. Presentation. Present your dessert in an environment where you don't have many flammable items. So if you can, remove the tablecloth or place it on like a, a piece of stone. Make sure the people are not hovering right over the dessert. And when you present the dessert, make sure that the actual container is going to be conducive to having some fire on it. So in this case, even though it is glass, I just wanted to show you something that is not going to work well because as you can see, it's really a flat surface. And as you pour your burning alcohol, it's just going to run over. So this is probably not a good idea, even though it looks great as a presentation piece, it's probably not that practical. Um, what is practical is a large surface area and somewhat curved up. And it's also good to have a few items handy just in case something unfortunate happens. Uh, a lid, metal lid, is good to snap out unnecessary flames as well as you know maybe a box of baking soda or a fire extinguisher. This is not to scare you but just to be safe. In order to make this a show-stopping dessert the ambiance needs to be right and it doesn't work as well when it's out in broad daylight but in a darkened room, you will be able to see the flame much better. Now for the placement of your chocolate ball on your dessert plate. As you can see, it will roll uh, somewhat, although this particular chocolate ball, we have uh, the ice cream that is holding it down. But in order to make it safe, I would highly recommend you securing your chocolate ball on your plate by surrounding it with either some fruit or placing it on a piece of cake or a dollop of cream. So in this case, I have some washed berries and then just place it around, around your chocolate ball so that it's not gonna go anywhere. So I've just actually placed four here still seems like it's going to be moving but if I just did that and then placed some blueberries to secure it then it's not going to go anywhere all right you can plate it with berries and then you can add some mint leaves to add some color to it it's really up to you. You can even use some melted chocolate sauce and just stick it right onto the plate. But it works well just to place some berries around it so that it's secure and it's not going to go anywhere. So now we're going to go and light the chocolate ball. All right, so here is the Grand Marnier. And first we're going to microwave the Grand Marnier in this container for about 30 seconds in order to release the alcohol vapors. And by releasing the alcohol vapors, it just allows it to ignite easily. Um, when you put it in the microwave, just make sure that it doesn't overbubble because then you're actually evaporating the alcohol. Okay. Now I'm going to pour 
the heated alcohol into my dispenser. And then using a lighter, preferably a long reach lighter, ignite the alcohol. And then we're going to slowly pour it on. Whoa. And there you have it. Have a fantastic show-stopping dessert. More recipes can be found on sammywongskitchen.com or social media. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.